What's going on guys? So today I'm out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas, and we're gonna take a look at this absolutely beautiful Jayco Eagle mid-bunk fifth wheel. Now you guys know I'm a big fan of mid-bunk fifth wheels, and this one executes on it very well in a lot of ways, and the folks over at Jayco are doing some really, really nice things that I definitely think are worth mentioning. Hang tight, I'll be right back. As always, let's kick this thing off by talking about the specs on this unit. So this is gonna have a gross vehicle weight rating of 15,200 pounds. It's gonna have a cargo capacity of 2,168 pounds, and it's gonna ride on 6,600 pound axles. So I kind of would have preferred 7,000 pound axles, but you can see where they've kind of bumped up the axle ratings from 6,000 to 6,600 pound axles. So it's given you a reasonable amount of axle capacity to manage the weight of this trailer, especially considering that the truck is gonna carry about 2,500 to 3,000 pounds worth of that weight. So I think you're in good shape there. It has E-rated Goodyear Endurance tires. And if you haven't noticed, the Eagle lineup is sticking with Goodyear Endurance tires because they still have a high enough load range tire for Eagle. But on their higher end series like North Point and Pinnacle, they've gone to Uniroyal H-rated tires because Goodyear Endurance doesn't go beyond its E-rated tires. I think actually they might go to an F-rated tire, but I believe, yeah, F-rated is probably the highest rating that they have. But again, they don't go into G or H-rated tires, so Jayco switched to Uniroyal on their heavier models. That said, let's take a look at the inside of this RV, then we'll come back out and see what the outside's all about. Okay, so we're gonna hop inside of this Jayco Eagle 355 MBQS. Again, Goodyear Endurance tires down there. A lot of great perks to these, but one of the biggest ones is what you see right here, that tow assist package. This unit comes equipped with ABS, anti-lock braking, as well as sway mitigation and a tow odometer. So this is technology that you never saw on RVs in the past. And it's super cool to see that Jayco's including them on a lot of different models and a lot of products that they now release. That's just one of those extra steps when I tell people that the manufacturing of RVs is evolving. They definitely are. And this is one area that they don't have to do this, but they are doing it. So I can definitely appreciate that. And it also has the Moride safety rail here, which I really like this grab rail, considering doing that as an upgrade to the surveyor. All right, stepping inside, let's take a look around this unit. A lot of cool things going on, a couple subtle ones. All right, so we'll start over here in the kitchen. First of all, Everchill 12 volt residential size refrigerator. It's got two pullout drawers and then it's got the side by side top portion. This is super cool, especially being a 12 volt refrigerator. The evolution of the refrigerator industry in RVs, especially in 2023 and 2024, has been absolutely amazing. You could never have seen a refrigerator like this like prior to 2023. Maybe some of them being introduced in 22, but something like this, is becoming very common in 23 and 24. So that's super cool. I love the look of these cabinetries and this little black tone that goes around the inside of them just looks absolutely amazing. A lot of nice storage space, magnetic holds. This is a perfect spot for a coffee maker because there is power right above there. Very, very nice. I love the look. This backboard right here, Honestly, it looks a little cheap to me. I wish they would have gone with something a little bit more texturized, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more dimensional, maybe like a wooden backer, something that just stands out. That looks really cheap to me, in my opinion. Easy fix, easy to put something over that, but the folks at Jayco, I think, had an opportunity here to put something that really stood out right there, and I think they missed on that. Again, I'm trying to be more honest about this stuff in 2024, or basically trying to tell you more what I see explain things a little bit more when I see it. Nice cabinetry up here. I think something the industry should also do, and not just on high-end models, is to put stoppers to keep cabinets from hitting, even if they just put a little rubber piece right here so when the cabinet opens, it's not wood on wood, right? A little rubber stopper right here so at least bounces. The folks over at Van Lee back in the day, right, they put a little cable to prevent it. I don't think the cable's necessary, but at least a little rubber piece right there to stop things from hitting. I mean, look at this. That's only not hitting because that's there, but just again, they put that right there, <laughs> the little rubber stopper on the corner of the refrigerator, which is kind of funny, honestly, but it kind of stops it, but it really doesn't. Nice refrigerator. I really like that. I like the four burner stove oven combination. That's really nice. 
Nice full-size residential microwave from GE. Good storage, lots of drawers. None of these are soft closing. Dual basin stainless steel sink, I do like that. I know a lot of people are fans of single basin sinks, but not me. Good amount of area for trash can, plus some more storage over here. This is a really nice pantry. I love the adjustable shelves. This is something you just don't see enough of on RVs. That is really nice. Just the ability for you to take these shelves, move them to different heights so you can store different things in there, I think is extraordinary. You have your Insignia TV in place, nice panoramic fireplace, JBL soundbar. I like it when they use brand names like JBL. That's really nice. Cabinetry up top. I love the contrasting tones as well. Nice strut arms to hold it up. Ceiling fan up top. Got a lot of cabinetry storage back here. Magnetic holds again. That's an upgrade I did on our fifth wheel, and it's one that I recommend you do on your own. Magnetic holds are great because if a cabinet opens up and it closes, it can catch versus the plastic holds that just kind of pinch. Once it opens up, it actually has more encouragement to stay open than it does to close again. I made a video on that. You have a nice sleeper sofa down here. Don't think these open, even though they probably should. Power USB there as well. You have your floor vents here. Some people like them, some people don't. They're more efficient, but they're also a bit of an eyesore. I kind of agree with the philosophy of putting them underneath cabinetry. I know most manufacturers, even one of my favorite brands, Coachman Fifth Wheels, they don't do that, but I think it kind of needs to be done because no one wants to see these vents on the floor. I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of heating efficiency to move those things out of the way. I like the flat flooring right here, theater seating over here, USB ports. I do wish in this price category and above that dual pane windows would just come standard. You know, they just need to be a thing. They block out so much heat. They make your air conditioning so much more efficient. It should just be a thing. I like these little pull strings right here to bring the blinds down. That is super nice. So here's something that's worth noting and the folks here will fix this before you buy it but you can see how part of that roller blind is hanging down. This is not exclusive to this brand. Almost all brands, whenever they come down to an RV dealership from wherever the manufacturer are, at some point, one model or two of them are gonna have problems with blinds coming down just because of how they attach them to the wall. I really think that they should start putting backer boards thicker wood or something on the back side of these panels right here so you're not just going into the Luan or the Asda wall board you're going into that plus maybe like a quarter inch thick piece of plywood just during the lamination process if they could do that it would prevent problems like this from ever happening and I think that that's definitely something that the manufacturers should start doing again just trying to be real with you guys this is super cool Nice little ottoman. You can slide this out of the way, move it over here so you can have it as a table or a footrest for the folks who are sitting on the couch. I really like that. I like this really rustic style table look. The chairs look really nice. And there's storage underneath them as well. Wireless charging over here. You have your 110 plug over there. Okay, let's work our way to the mid bunk right here. So this is a really nice mid bunk, nice and deep. You got plenty of room in front of it. This is gonna fold out into a bed. You're gonna have a window right here. This folds down into your upper bunk, which is really nice. You got these little lights that can turn on and off whenever you have power going to the unit. You have a backer for a TV up here. Really nice drawers. This is a good desk area. It gets a thumbs up from me. I like functional mid bunks and this is absolutely a functional mid bunk. This doesn't have to be, a lot of people think this is also for kids only. This could absolutely be an office space. This could just be an extra room. This could be a crafts room or a music room or whatever you want. If you play keyboard and you want to put a keyboard in there and get all this stuff out of here, you can do that. Having a mid bunk isn't necessarily a bunk space permanently. You can convert this into whatever you want to convert it into. Because everything in there is removable. You have your upper loft right here, which is really nice. Kids love this space. My daughter absolutely loves the loft in our Brookstone. And I think most people, when they get a mid bunk, they find out that this is a place where their kids spend the most time and they bring their friends when they come over. All right, over here, you have a good size shower. Really nice. I love how it's really flush to the floor. You don't have it elevated up. Nice surround. 
Though I do like the surround that they put in some of their higher models a little bit better. I can't imagine that there's really a cost difference between the two, but I think the, the surround that they put in like the North Point and the Pinnacle just looks a little nicer, a little bit more subtle. But you may absolutely love this kind of fake marble look, but you know, for me, I would prefer the, uh, the upgraded marble look that they have in the other models porcelain foot flush toilet and I don't think it would actually hurt them to do that because then it would just make people see this as wow I'm getting a Jayco Eagle lower price point I'm getting a lot and I even get that more higher end looking residential shower nice medicine cabinet really good surface out here a lot of space around the sink as well good cabinet space and storage underneath all right stepping into the bedroom this is a king size bed mattress does not feel very good i would definitely recommend upgrading this is one of those big areas that i talked about that manufacturers should start adopting in 2024 just put a better quality mattress in one that doesn't need to be replaced that's probably what i would recommend most mattresses that come in rvs even relatively high-end rvs need, should be replaced or you have to put tons and tons of pillow toppers memory foam toppers on them to make them feel comfortable i think it just makes a lot of sense you know even if you look at some of the lower end and real mattresses they're more comfortable than what what has been coming in these RVs and I think a lot of people when they buy a new RV they just expect to go out camping in it they don't want to have to deal with upgrading a mattress I love how the nightstands mainly protrude out the front there's very little that overhangs I don't think any of it needs to overhang in my opinion I think it all should just come out the front but I think they did that just to give it a cleaner look I do like the shiplap design in the back here. I kind of wish they would have done that in the kitchen area where they put that kind of cheap looking backer board, in my opinion. What do you think? Whisper quiet air conditioning system in here. There's two AC units, one right here and then one in the very back over there. Beautiful closet space. Really nice. You have connections for a washer and dryer in here as well. So you can put the washer on one side, dryer on the other side. Nice mirrored cabinet doors for the uh, or sliding doors for your closet you can have storage under the bed as well good amount of it also it's very nice that's not going to lift up tv would go here and then you have lots of wardrobe space right there all right let's check out the outside what do you guys think of the inside please leave a comment below Okay, starting from the front, working our way back, this has the new Rhino frame. Not necessarily new anymore, it's a couple years old. But this specific frame uses the Rhino box. Um, there's not an upgraded pin box on this unit, and I kind of would have expected one. Not that it absolutely needs one, but it definitely helps. And I think, again, in 2024, you're just expecting these models now to have some type of upgraded pin box. Otherwise, you're relying on an upgraded fifth wheel hitch to do all the dampening for you. And I think it just makes sense. Uh, the folks from LCI who make the Rhino Box absolutely have all sorts of different options, as does Moride, as does Reese. There's a lot of great options available to dampen the connection between the truck and the trailer, trailer and the truck. This has the electric ground control auto leveling system. It is a six point system. You have the J-port here on the side. It gives you the ability to plug in a grill. Really, that's what it's for, a grill or a table. You just slide it into the side right here. It's basically a two inch receiver. And then you have this real thick, heavy baggage door here. Gives you a lot of storage under here. This is the outside area that plugs into this J-port. So that includes a sink as well as a flat surface, probably something to put a griddle or a cooktop on. This is a huge belly storage in here. One of the nice things about mid bunks is you typically get a lot of storage in here because the unit is so much longer to support the mid bunk. You have your cable connections, power, and everything there if you want to put a TV outside. Over here is probably going to be a compact refrigerator. Yep, and then you got some space here as well if you want to throw like a microwave or just a phone charger or charge up your Bluetooth speaker. Low point drain. Oh, this is an outside shower. Your low point drain is going to be under there. That's nice. A lot of uh, manufacturers just put a shower port, but they actually put a hot and cold water shower there. I guess if you've, you know, just got done swimming in the lake or the pond or the pool, this is going to help you spray yourself off with water that's not freezing cold. Outside speakers, you have lighting right here. I love the fact that you can turn it on from out here. That is really nice. Again, more I'd step above step with assist along with the safety rail right here. This is super cool. Again, probably going to put this on the surveyor so if you want to watch an install video on this you'll get to see that Goodyear endurance tires pre 3000 suspension system reinforced frame this has a 12 inch i-beam frame and they reinforce it underneath 
plus they reinforce the shackle hangers. Does not have heavy duty shackle straps or greasable wet bolts, which I do think they should put on. It's not that much of an upgrade. Honestly, it's a couple hundred bucks, but it's a ton of peace of mind. You can see it has a rack and pinion slide out over here. You have your awning here and your awning right here to cover up pretty much the whole side. Plus that one has a nice little stability reinforcement there in the center to uh, keep it from slouching over time. Coming around, standard framed windows. LED lights, prepped for a Furion wireless backup camera. And it is prepped for towing. So it has a 3,000 pound tow capacity, two inch hitch receiver, 300 pound hitch rating, and a four pin harness, plus two inch receiver, has your chain hooks and your four way connection there. Do not recommend towing behind a fifth wheel though. I think I say that over and over and over again. Have your ladder to get you on top. This uses the new exact slide out cable driven slide system. So this is a far better system than the one that it replaces. I used to be a huge critic of cable driven slides. I think this at least makes me feel more confident if you get a unit with them. They've fixed most of the issues that plagued the uh, previous cable driven slide system and I think this system actually uses two motors now plus it's a much simpler uh, architecture in terms of how the cables work. But yeah, I, I think this system is a far better system than the outgoing model, even though I still prefer rack and pinion over cable, in my opinion. I think it's still even more reliable. You have a rack and pinion slide out right here, or through frame, because it goes into the frame and it actually uses the frame to support the slide instead of the side wall of the RV to support the slide. That's the big structural difference. All right, working our way around. Have our Furion on-demand water heating system. Have our Suburban furnace. This is on strut so it doesn't hit that slide when it's open. You have your Nautilus control panel right here. This is probably a spray port. It is. See, this is all kind of a wallboard plywood material. I would prefer that this whole area be sealed off because what if you get like a slow drip right here? It's probably gonna damage that. And I prefer this to be enclosed, that way any water issues you have right here stay right here and don't permeate into this space. Here's your auto leveling controls, power disconnect right there. Also looks like it's a breaker, that's cool. And then you have your inverter up here, very nice. What's your opinion? Tried to go over all the things I love about the unit, tried to go over all the things that I would like to see changed a little bit. Overall, I like it though. I like the direction Jayco has gone. They've done really, really well in innovating their product, uh, adding a lot of great technology, a lot of safety features, a lot of features like ABS and sway control that customers probably never would have expected, but now they just come standard on some of these models. And I think that's a really good thing. I think it's good for everybody. And especially those who have never towed before and who are planning on putting, you know, a 42 foot long fifth wheel behind a pickup truck and taking it down the road for the first time. Anyways, guys, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.